All right, folks, it's a nice day outside, so we're working in the garage, and today we're going to fit this hammerhead on this handle. But I got to do some shaping first because this is a claw hammer handle, so it's got a rectangular profile, and it's going on this ball peen hammer, which has a round, rounded, oval shaped eye. So I've got a chisel with. Uh, some rasping on the front and back, and I'm going to use that to profile the corners of this handle so that way I can get it into the eye on the hammer. I'm going to work slowly because I don't want to remove too much material, uh, but basically I'm just going to rotate it in and out of the vise so I can get to the four corners, round it off a little bit, and then test fit. All right, it looks like I've got quite a bit that needs to come off both the width and the length, and I need to round it out some more. So this is basically gonna be it. So I'll keep going and I'll bring you back when I'm done shaping the handle. So here I am poorly showing that this, the top of the eye here is um, pushed in, it's crowned in. So I won't be able to get the hammer handle in or through that, so I'm gonna take a small uh, half round file and file that so that the eye is straight. It's uh, mushroomed in quite a bit on both sides. So I've got a half round file, a golf ball handle, and we'll straighten that out. Well, it took quite a bit of work, but I finally got the hammerhead to fit onto the handle. I've got quite a bit of material removed. It took me about an hour with um, this rasp and uh, some sandpaper and uh, I've got a Amora carbon knife that I was using just to kind of shape it a little bit. And now I'm going to char it with a torch because I like how that looks. All right, here we go. Clearly this is something that should be done outside because uh, it's pretty smoky in here now, but there it goes. It's not perfectly even, so I'm going to just keep going with the torch until I have it as even as I can get it, and then I'm going to go over it with some sandpaper. I'll probably start at 100 grit, then jump to 150, then 220. And if I'm feeling really motivated, I'll jump all the way up to 400, and then that should be good. And then I'll, uh, I'll seal it. All right, I've got the handle sanded up to 400 grit, and I've got some Howard's Butcher Block wax on it, which is basically some 
some beeswax, and I think it's mineral spirits. Looks pretty good, I'm happy with it. It's nice and smooth, it's nice and dark. And now it's time to put the business end on it. All right, there we go. All right, what I'm gonna do now is I'll take a saw and I'll just cut that off and then we'll put the wedges in. And there you have it, folks. I doubt you guys will be able to see that, but it says, Champion Deermont Tool Company. That's a heavy hammer. Looks pretty good. All right, here's the finished product. The handle is very dark and I really like it. I don't know if you guys will be able to see how dark, but it's it goes very well with the kind of aged dark look of the, uh, the hammerhead and I mean this is a big hammer this is, this is the largest hammer I currently own notice I said currently and just to give you an idea how big the face is here's a quarter so it's about I don't know probably half quarter covers half the face and I love it. So I'm going to go stick it on my hammer rack so it can hang out with all my other hammers. All right. There it is on the hammer rack. So it's sitting next to my Amco H4 non sparking beryllium hammer. That's a nice, hefty hammer, too. And there's the Proto 1332. I also did the handle on this one. I didn't do it as dark. It looks nice. And here's a cute little lakeside. Cute little hammer. And I've got a little little tack hammer and I almost never use it and then there's a wooden mallet that I made out of some ash and oak wood dowels so that's my hammer collection in case anyone was wondering